to you from London. I'm Samantha Johnson. This is Arise News. And welcome to the Global Sports Report. These are the stories and results making the headlines on the programme tonight. All the latest on another absorbing night of Champions League action. Pep charged by UEFA after T-shirt protest. Plus, leading US golfer demands a ladies' masters at Augusta. Also on the program, the most sought-after belt in boxing history. Will it be Mayweather or Pacquiao who gets their hands on it? from the Global Sports Report. In the next half an hour, we will have all the results that matter from around the globe. And we'll be meeting our guests, the sports commentator and agent Daniel Lutaya and David Doherty, the president of Team Nigeria UK. But before we do, let's turn straight to tonight's Champions League quarterfinal second leg ties. And here are the results. Real Madrid have beaten their rivals. Atletico Madrid 1-0 on the night. The only goal of the tie. A goalless draw in Monaco was enough for Juventus to go through thanks to their 1-0 win at home. Here's how it went down. In the first, as in the in the first leg, the second leg of the Madrid derby was another hard-fought affair with few chances. Atletico were reduced to 10 men when Arda Turin was shown a second yellow card for a high tackle on defender Sergio Ramos. Real finally made the breakthrough through Javier Hernandez with just two minutes to go. Uh, Juventus travelled to Monaco with a slender 1-0 lead. It was Monaco who had all the possession in the first half, but they failed to break down a resolute uh, Juventus defence. That game ended goalless with Juve going through on aggregate. So this is confirmation of the semi-final lineup of the Champions League with Bayern Munich, Barcelona, who both progressed from Tuesday night's games. They're joined by Juventus and Real Madrid, but fans will have to wait until Friday to find out who they're facing in the semi-finals. The draw will take place on Friday morning at UEFA's HQ in Switzerland. Staying with football and UEFA have sensationally charged Pep Guardiola for wearing a T-shirt demanding justice for a journalist who died at last summer's World Cup. Argentine George Lopez was killed in a suspicious road accident while in Sao Paulo in July. Guardiola was sporting the top which read Justicia para Topo during his pre-match press conference before Bayern Munich dumped Porto out of the Champions League. The message appeared to support a campaign to investigate Lopez's death. Meanwhile, Guardiola described Bayern Munich's progress to the semi-finals of the Champions League as about life or death. The Germans overturned a 3-1 first leg deficit against Porto, winning 6-1 to advance 7-4 on aggregate. Guardiola's side scored five goals in a thrilling first half at the Allianz Arena. The result has once again given their fans hope that they can reclaim the title that they last won in 2013. That's difficult to predict. They can do it, but they'll have to make an effort. They made a few mistakes on the first leg. But apart from that, there's a good chance. Well, I'm joined in the studio by sports commentator and agent Daniel Latire and David Doherty, the president of Team Nigeria UK. So, gentlemen, you've had a look at the semi-finals uh, lineup. Like, who do you think is going to get to the finals? Uh, for me, I'll go for uh, Real Madrid. Why? <laughs> I it's think, easy to say Real Madrid and then, I you think know, they're uh, the uh, champions. defending champions and uh, I'm sure they've got a very good uh, 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 system uh, which I think can contain most of the uh, teams remaining coming up in the uh, semi-finals. Okay, so uh, Real Madrid are through. Does this mean Ancelotti gets to keep his job or will he have to win it in order to keep his job? Um, I, think, I think it's going to be a, a very tough um, semi-finals for them this season. Um, looking at what Barcelona did and um, Bayern Munich are, are very on top of their game. So hopefully, um, maybe Madrid will be 
at the finals, um, looking at what we've got on crack now. So, and um, probably Bayern Munich will come, will come through as well. So you're saying Real Madrid or uh, Bos um, sorry, Bos uh, yeah. Bayern Munich, depending on who, who they face. Absolutely. But out of the four, who do you think is the strongest? Um, I will go for Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Go on, Mr. Footballman. Why Barcelona? Tell me why. Um, they, you know, we were watching them um, last night. Was I mean, it was superb. I mean, they've got a great team. You know, you know, great attackers. You know that that can that can change. You know, the, the rhythm of the game. So I believe. They've got, you know, more chances, you know, better than the rest of the teams. Yeah, that Iniesta uh, assist. So that was absolutely, was, that was just was everything yeah. last night. Um, well, let's have a look at Juventus. They haven't been to the uh, semi, well, they're through to the semi-finals for the first time uh, since 2003. The last Italian team to win it was Mourinho's Inter Milan. Do you think that an Italian team can win again? Not at all, no. oh. Okay, that's a bit, no, of, that's a bit of a rough answer, but yeah. Not, not at this time at all, because, I mean, looking at the three, you know, remaining teams in, 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 the, in the semi-finals, Madrid, Barcelona and Bayern, I mean, I don't, I don't see um, Juventus coming, you know, coming through to the finals at all now. Well, surely it comes down to luck as well. Uh, no, no, not at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at this stage. Boys down to, I mean, the quality in the team, you know, I mean, looking at what Juventus have got at this, I mean, I mean, not trying to bring them down, you know, they, I mean, they, they're becoming aging, you know, look at it a bit, the likes of Pelo and, um, um, I mean, they're too old to, you know, to come through to the final right now. It's all about those three teams. OK, and what do you think? Do you agree with him? Juventus or an Italian team can't actually win the Champions League? I think I, I agree with him. And uh, uh, as you see, Real Madrid is keeping it real. Uh, mm -hmm. They've had a tough game today, but they left it at the 8-8 eight, eight minutes mm -hmm. and then they scored. So it's going to be uh, really uh, uh, a team with a great uh, teamwork, uh, great resilience to go through and take the trophy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, for me it's going to be Real Madrid. Okay. Why? Because they're keeping it real and they have a great teamwork. Mm -hmm. And they've shown today that uh, to be a champion, you have to fight till the last minute. Okay, well, of course, if they win, they've retained the title. But tell me something, why is it so difficult to retain the Champions League? Because every year, every, every year, every team comes up. I mean, you know, you know, trying to boost their teams and trying to win. This is the biggest trophy. I mean, I mean, in the, I mean, I mean, I mean, looking at football as a whole, right now, Champions League is out of you know, every every player wants to play at that level. You know, they want they want to try and you know, you know, show what they are capable of. So I mean, every year we we're, we're, we're going to be seeing a tough, tough, you know, um, Champions League. I mean, set up groups. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your views in thank part you. one. We'll see you in the second part of the show. Uh, still to come on the programme, uh, we'll take a look at the Emerald Encrusted Belt, which will be lifted by either Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao on May the 2nd. We will have a very good chat about that in the second part of the show. Uh, now, for all you sporting buffs, here's a little pose for you. No prize for getting it right. Let's see if we can do it anyway. Uh, which team has the most Champions League semi-final appearances? Is it Barca, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid or AC Milan? We'll let you know after the break.
There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world. Kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands. UBA, Africa's global bank. Welcome back to the Global Sport Report from Arise News. I'm Samantha Johnson, and before the break, we asked you whether you knew the answer to this question. Which team has the most Champions League semi-final appearances? Is it A, Barcelona, B, Bayern Munich, C, Real Madrid, or D, AC Milan? And the answer is C, Real Madrid. Yes, after tonight, Real have reached the semi-finals 20 six times. In fact, they are the most successful club in the competition's history, securing a record 10th title, La Decima, last season under Carlo Ancelotti, and they're the only club to win the trophy five times in a row. Unbelievable. Let's take you through some more of the sporting stories making the headlines around the world, starting with boxing. Vladimir Klitschko will match legendary champion Joe Lewis in the record books with his 27th heavyweight title fight on Saturday against the unbeaten American Bryant Jennings at Madison Square Gardens. The 39-year-old has put a stranglehold on the heavyweight division, stretching back nine years and 17 successful defences in a row since winning the crown for the second time in 2000. And six. The two fighters held their last press conference on Tuesday before the April 25th showdown at Madison Square Gardens, and Klitschko sounded confident. I am uh, definitely excited about this fight, definitely excited to fight at Madison Square Garden. Seven years break back in the States. Fantastic. Right time, right venue, and right opponent. You are, you're a great fighter. I've been studying you particularly and carefully and um, you know you have a lot of positive sides a lot of good sides and you're using it in the ring only 10 days ago until the richest fight in boxing takes place in Las Vegas and the preparations and build-up for the Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather Jr. fight are in overdrive. Starting with this, the WBC have presented their jeweled encrusted title belt ahead of the long-awaited mega bout. Uh, the belt, made in Mexico City and is worth $1 million, has a 3000 one hundred, sorry, 3,015 emeralds, and they were all glued by hand and surrounded by 800 grams of pure gold. Former heavyweight champion Larry Holmes, light heavyweight champion Adonis Stevenson, and the WBC president Mauricio Suleiman were on hand to show off the prized possession. I think Mayweather will win because he boxes, he moves, he don't stand still. But it's going to be a great fight. I, I can't wait to see it. From bedazzling jewels to something with a little less bling. The Philippine Postal Corporation have released limited copies of Pacquiao stamps to celebrate the historic fight against Mayweather. And unsurprisingly, most of the stamps were sold out on the first two days since its initial release. See, the stamps is basically bringing you all the history. It depicts the, the country, uh, the history, the person, all of it. No? So this is something that maybe not in our time, in the next 50 years, people would look at the stamps and look at this as the historical background on who was Pacquiao when he was in 2015 fighting uh, uh, this fight of the century. IAAF President Lamin Diak has dismissed suggestions that Russia might be excluded from the Olympic Games over doping allegations. A German television program made the allegations of systematic doping and said that almost all of the Russian athletes doped. IAAF Ethics Commission and the World Anti-Doping Agency are investigating, but Diak said that Russia wouldn't be banned from international athletics.
they are in. I think that it was a joke. Like we had a declaration in Russia, they are 99 percent doped and so on. I said, what is exaggerated is ridiculous. We organized here in Russia the Olympic, the Winter Olympics last year. We organized our world championships. It signifies that we are all okay, like wrong. The IOC, the key. There is some athlete doped. There are the advocates and sanction. I think what we have to do in Russia is to, like the United States. In the United States, we, have, we used to have a lot of problems with the United States in the 90s. Golf now and American Paula Creamer has called for a women's masters at Augusta National. The club accepted its first female members in 2012. One of them, former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. However, Chairman Billy Payne has said that it's unlikely that Augusta could host another tournament. There are currently five major tournaments in the women's game and Creamer believes that adding a sixth shouldn't be a problem. Surfing now, and Courtney Conlogue beat fellow American Carissa Moore to win the Margaret River Pro in Australia. California Conlogue uh, scored two excellent eight-point-plus rides to defeat Hawaii's Moore, and the result moves her to second place on the WSL rankings, going into the fourth event of the year, the Oi Rio Pro. I had a bit of a tricky start this event. I was just kind of feeling out of rhythm, and those off days, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go surf and have a bunch of fun and I think it just got me all psyched and happy for this end of the event and yeah, it just feeling really good. All right, let's take a look at what's been getting the world's sporting attention on social media today and it wasn't just Porto's defence that got torn apart last night. Uh, the Bayern Munich manager Pep Guardiola managed to tear his trousers during an incredibly exciting night for Bayern, who led their opponents 5-0 at half-time. The Spanish tactician's underwear was on show for all to see, and afterwards he joked, I'll have to buy new ones for the next match. I hope you do. You have the money anyway. Right, every night here on the Global Sports Report, we like to pick our MVP, our most valuable player. And tonight, we are honouring uh, Barcelona legend Xavi. The former Spain international played for the 148th time in the Champions League, more than any other player since the tournament changed to its current format in 1992. Although he didn't hold the record for long, Real Madrid goalkeeper Iker Casillas has joined him on 148 appearances following tonight's game against Atletico. Arctic storms of polar bears and ice swims are all in a day's work as four Norwegian children trained for a mission to race to the North Pole on skis. Tara clearly has more. Four Norwegian teenagers are getting to grips with Mother Nature as they embark on a made-for-TV adventure called Mission Arctic. Elias, Erika, Johanna and Johannes began their quest on April 16 and are making their way to the North Pole. The trek will take them about eight days. Before the journey, the four were put through their paces by expedition leader Alexander Gamma at a training camp on the Norwegian Arctic islands of Svalbard. Four. We have to secure the tents regardless of the likelihood of a storm. That is the rule from now. And that's the same with all we do. We have to be prepared to deal with these challenges at short notice. It's very windy and it's quite cold and there's snow, so it's quite tough. The training also included a stay on a research ship near Svalbard. The aim of the expedition is to teach young people about the causes and effects of climate change. The four will present their findings at the UN Climate Change Conference in Paris in November. But first, they have to learn how to control those huskies. Well, joining me in the studio this evening are my guests, the sports commentator and agent, Daniel Latoya, and David Doherty, the president of Team Nigeria UK. Now, the build-up to the big fight continues, but have you changed your mind about who's actually going to win? I think you said Mayweather before. Has that changed? 
Uh, it will, it's going to be very hard to change me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll always stay with Mayweather because of his style of boxing. And uh, uh, when you look at the uh, styles make fights, mm -hmm. and this uh, man, man is made for him. Why? Because he comes forward, and I, I think he's a short man, he's big and short. Mayweather is going to stay outside. However, if he makes him softer by touching him with the great jabs and moving away from his power shots, then he will come to him and then take it to him. I'm sure it's going to be a very interesting fight. Mm. So yeah. can you see Pacquiao getting a look in here? I'm going, I'm going, I'm going for Mayweather, definitely. So wow, I think okay. it's going to be hard for, for Pacquiao to, 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 win this, to, to win this fight. It's going to be a bit hard. Okay. Yeah, I think Mayweather has got the edge. Got well, let's the... just say, playing devil's advocate here, say if Mayweather does lose, do you see him retiring or maybe looking for a rematch? I mean, what do you think? I think he's going to come back for a rematch, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think there will be a rematch, uh, a rematch <laughs> clause in that contract. They must be having it because he cannot just lose and then walk away. He will want to come back and then disprove the haters because millions of people, they want him to lose to... <laughs> Well, yeah, let's have a good chat about that. Why do, um, why do some people want to see Mayweather lose? I mean, he's arguably one of the best fighters in the world, but so is Pacquiao. But I've never seen so much vitriol towards one man. Um, I think there are two factors here. When you look at uh, men who is fighting Mayweather, he's a very generous man. People love him. He's a hero when you go back to uh, the uh, Pacific. Um, he helps the poor. He comes from a poor background and he goes back and helps them. He pays their bills. He's built so many hospitals. He's a congressman. Uh, congressman now is bigger than even the president of the, of the country. So people love him dearly. And when he moved to America, he had to uh, pull all their boxing fans to support him. Why? The way his story touched their hearts. And... Uh, I believe right now everyone wants to see him winning against Mayweather, although both of them have got a similar uh, background of coming from the poor uh, societies. But Mayweather may have uh, people dislike him because he has made a lot of money. He's from Boyat. He bought, he, he has everything you can think of, all the cars in the drive yard. He's got jets and uh, he tries to show off. But that's what money comes with because you cannot have money and then you don't have the power to buy everything you can. Yeah, but he's very good at what he does. I mean, it would be a different case if, if he was shooting his mouth off and he wasn't really good. I mean, why and is it so hard to like a character like Mayweather? He's very good at what he does. Yes, he gets the money. That's his job. I, um, for me, I'm, I'm just going to agree on uh, what he said. And <laughs> you on can't Pacquiao. agree too yeah. much uh, this on, on Pacquiao, but in terms of, I mean, what, what I mean, Mayweather does. When someone is good at what they do, you know, you just have to support them. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. So you don't. It's just like looking at uh, Mourinho and said he's, he's, I mean, he's, he's bragging or he's doing anything. No, he's he bragging, doesn't. But there's a but bit of a cheek, there's doing. a little bit of cheekiness when it comes to Mourinho. But that's he's part of that's part of the game. So you just have to, you know, I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's good at it. He worked hard to get there, you know, and you. I mean, my, 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 Manny can be a calm person, I mean, a humble person that just want to go quiet, you know, does... I mean, Mayweather does the same, you know, I mean, I mean charity stuff as well. You might not have heard of I mean, we might not be seeing that, but he does. Does I he mean, do charity work? He does. He does the charity work, but not as big as uh, many, because many goes out there, he is a great believer in, uh, he's a Christian, and he believes in God, he goes out, he helps everyone. It doesn't matter, you're poor on the street, who come and say, okay, what's going on here? He gives them the money. Mm -hmm. Well, as Mayweather, just go out maybe on Thanksgiving Day, say, okay, we buy a big truck of uh, <laughs> turkeys and give them away, but with a showmanship. Yeah. Well, as the other gentleman does it in a cool way. Okay. And uh, you can look at the way how the governments are looking for him that he's got uh, he doesn't pay the taxes, mm -hmm. but they keep it quiet because <laughs> they know that he helps them. Well, are people just blinded about his antics outside of the ring that they're forgetting about he is a, he's a craftsman? And we'll just have this as the last answer. And that's uh, Mayweather? Mm -hmm. Mayweather is a real craftsman because where he comes from, obviously, he's been taught how to fight from when he was still a young man, mm -hmm. and up to now, he's like... 
Okay. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. You. Right. Well, uh, that's it for this edition of Global Sports Reports here on Arise News, coming to you from London. Thank you very much for watching. Up next, it's World Briefing with Gavin Ramjo. Good night. Thinking of banking in Africa? Then think Zenith, one of the biggest in Nigeria, with assets over $16 billion. Listed among the 20 most influential brands in the world and winner of Best Bank in Corporate Governance. The most customer-focused bank in Nigeria. A success built on three foundations dedicated to people, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest.